Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing Salt and Sanctuary for the PlayStation 4. Salt and Sanctuary is a 2D action role playing game developed by Scar Studios. The game has a remarkable amount of similarities to the Dark Souls series, but don't worry, it's not as unforgiving or as hard as the Dark Souls games. So you start the game with a reasonably detailed character creator. You can choose your race, your religion, hairstyle, beard, etc. It's not hugely in-depth, but you can create characters that look pretty varied from one to the other. After this, you find yourself on a ship. You're a stowaway on a vessel that's carrying this princess. She's destined to have a, an arranged marriage with this guy, and basically it's supposed to avoid some kind of war. The ship gets attacked and you can fight your way through the marauders until you get killed. Then you wake up on a foggy beach and that's where the game really starts in earnest. The game world is huge, although at first you're restricted to the first beach area, one sanctuary and one castle. But soon enough you'll be delving deep into the earth's crust to take on all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures. There is no map to speak of so you'll have to remember your path through the large game world. It's not too bad at first, but later on in the game you might find yourself getting lost occasionally as it's quite a bit of a maze. Thankfully, if you're carrying a bell, you can ring it and it will take you back to the last sanctuary you visited. Or you can get a horn that you can blow that will take you to any specific sanctuary you've already been to, so there are ways around it. The game features hundreds of different items players can use and multiple weapon types, special moves and aerial attacks. You can wield single-handed or double-handed weapons, bow and arrows, magic spells. The RPG elements include choosing your origins, class, and you have an extensive skill tree to shape your character into a kind of a speedy rogue archer or a heavy-duty tank with thick armor and an epic two-handed sword. So the game is a mixture of combat and side-scrolling platform action, but more emphasis on combat on the whole. The combat is very well handled and you can attack, heavy attack, block, parry, you can use potions or special items on your weapons that will boost their traits for a limited time, you know, so you can add sort of lightning damage to your weapons, etc, depending on when you need it. The range of weapons is immense, you can use swords, axes, pikes, shields and even a chef's ladle. You can equip heavy armor or light armor. Each different one affects your dexterity and your ability to come maneuver and your stamina. You can learn magic spells and incantations and you can add more skills via the skill tree to make those spells more effective. You can use a bow and arrow. You can use a sword and a bow and arrow. Basically, you can alternate between two different main weapons. Also, you can find traders and they can transmogrify your weapon's appearance. So you can make the weapons look different look make them look unbelievably brutal so but you need certain items to do that but why is this game called salt and sanctuary well whenever you kill an enemy they drop salt which you can collect the more salt you get the better because salt is used to level up your character the more you level up the more you can expand your skill tree and your statistics so that you can be stronger better at magic faster whatever however if you get killed and you will many many times you will drop all of your salt and the person that killed you will carry that salt for a little while but if you go back to that area find the person who killed you you can kill them and get the salt back but sometimes you do lose salt if you keep dying so it can be annoying but you just have to be careful you don't have too much salt on you at any time because if you fall off a ledge and die goodbye salt to level up you've got to go back to your sanctuary the sanctuaries are basically like safe havens where you place an object on an altar, depending on your religion. Then you can add various items to it and that will add traders, blacksmiths or mages or various other people that you can interact with and buy things from, upgrade things, etc. The skill tree is honestly quite astounding in its depth. For an indie game it's amazing how many options you've got and how deep the process can be to customise your character and their skill set. You can add abilities to carry heavier weapons, heavier items, to cast spells better, to carry more health potions. It's very impressive. The game also has a huge array of enemies and they're all very different and very challenging. You know, some are melee based, some are range based, some are magicians or necromancers. 
There honestly are hundreds it seems and you always have to learn a new method every time you go to a new area. You know, from skeletons, zombies, evil knights, bats, ghosts, evil spirits, god knows, like all sorts of stuff. The boss fights are also quite challenging but most of them are pretty simple to defeat once you learn their moves and their skills and their weaknesses. Some you can just dodge and hit and dodge and hit. Others you'll need to enchant your weapons with holy powers or fire and others you just need to sort of do your homework and figure stuff out and try and get the tips that are littered around the map that you can find in little bottles. There are also random characters dotted around the world that will have quests for you to complete and if you complete them they'll give you a special item or they might brand you. Brands are kind of like things that will allow you to access other areas through special skills and you need some of these to finish the game. You can't get to certain areas without certain brands, like there's brands that let you walk on the ceiling or things like that. The game has a couch co-op mode. It's a bit complex to start, but basically you need a stone cell sword item. When you get to the sanctuary, you take the cell sword and you put it in the sanctuary and a new person will appear in there. You speak to them and it will say, do you want to add a person? and you say yes and then if there's a person sitting next to you with a controller they can jump in so it's it's not the most user friendly way of starting a co-op but once you know how to do it it's not too bad. Overall it's a huge game with buckets of depth but at times it can be a little bit of a grind to find enough salt to level up so you can wear better armor or carry more weapons or just fight the bosses without getting annihilated. It's only very occasionally that you'll get a bit bored of it, but after a few days away, you can just come back to the dungeon crawling solo or with a friend to sort of continue your journey. Like there isn't a really complicated story, so you could go months really without playing it, come back and it doesn't feel like you've been away. The game features 2D hand-drawn visuals, which are really nice to look at. It's got a beautiful art style. It's very kind of unique, very cool, very Gothic, Baroque, muted colors quite depressing very cool medieval fantasy with a kind of a dark twist personally i really like the art style it's got that kind of animated feel to it and it's just it's cool very cool the game music is very subtle and well suited to the kind of somber tone of the environments it's got gothic feeling to it but it's also got like electric guitar at times when you're kind of reaching a, a certain section the sound effects are solid and the environmental ambience is good and also the enemy sound effects do make you laugh like when you kill enemies they come out with some funny noises. Overall the audio is just really a good quality. Okay so what's good and what's bad? What's good? It's a really enjoyable journey for single players or couch co-op players. The art style is great as are the graphics. The combat is strong and it's more in depth than a lot of AAA games. The skill tree and character customization is amazing and has so much depth. The game is great value for money as you can pick this up for about $7.99. Each playthrough is a little bit different depending on the style of your character that you create and it's full of atmosphere, full of challenges and it's full of dark fantasy characters. What's bad? The game can be a little bit of a grind when you need to collect a certain amount of salt to level up, in particular when you're near the latter part of the game. But it's not a really massive negative thing, it's just, you know, the game gets quite tough later on so you do need to be better at having better weapons and armour. You need to expand your skill tree to do that, you need salt and a lot of it. And sometimes you will get killed in random places and lose loads of it so it can get a bit irritating but never to the point where you think i'll just stop playing okay so what is the verdict well for an indie game this is a pretty long review but salt and sanctuary is unlike any other indie game i've played the amount of depth and customization available and the actual size of the game is really unbelievable it's such an easy game to pick up and play and I've played through this a few times solo and with a friend and it's always fun and it's always fresh. Playing co-op with a friend is probably the best way to enjoy the game but it's also an amazing game for solo players. It's one of the best indie tiles I've ever played and I would strongly recommend it. So my score for Salt and Sanctuary is 9 out of 10. It's one of the best indie titles available for the PlayStation 4. It has a huge amount of depth and gameplay for single or co-op players. I love this game and I've played it for months single player. You know, I've also really enjoyed it playing it with one of my friends. It's just very enjoyable, in depth, great value for money. You know, it's one of my one of my standout top 5 indies of all time. 
Okay, that was the review. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.